So, question 10. We finally get round to the last question. <laughs> Circles question. Thanks. That just sounded sarcastic. Great job. Right, the first, the first three marks, um, Dave would be disappointed if anybody didn't get these, because this is how we started the circle, and it's all we've ever done with the circle. We always do this. You write it with the gaps so that we can fill them in. We've done so many of these, it's just a, a standard start of a circle question. Half of minus 10 is minus 5, squared is plus 25. So we take away the 25. A half of 4 is 2, squared is 4. Take away the 4. So we've got x minus 5 squared there. We've got y plus 2 squared there. We've got plus 4 minus 4, minus 25, so that's minus 25. Take it to the other side, makes it plus 25 over there. That's it in the form that we wanted. So our centre is the point 5 minus 2, and our radius is the square root of 25, so 5. That should have been a straightforward three marks because we've done lots of practice of that kind of step. And you've got to, you have to know how to do that we'll do it. to do a circles question. Part two. Now this again, this is an important thing about wording of questions. Show that the tangent to the circle at 8, 2 is 3x plus 4y is 32. Now, you're not allowed to use the equation 3x plus 4y is 32 in order to show that that is the tangent. So you've got to ignore it, you've got to not use anything from it. To the point of even not being allowed to use the fact that you can see what the gradient of the tangent is there. That's a check to make sure you've got it right, but you can't use that. You need to find it out yourself. So let's do a little sketch, shall we, of what we've got. We've got a beautifully drawn circle with centre 5 minus 2. We've got a tangent at the point 8, 2, which is probably over there somewhere. Oh, I missed. There's the tangent. We've, uh, we've also... We know how we do this with tangents. There's the radius. The radius is perpendicular to the tangent. So, we need to find the gradient of the tangent. First, we need to find the gradient of the radius. The radius gradient of the radius <laughs> is change in y over change in x, which is 4 over 3. Is that right? Yep. So that's the gradient of the radius. So the gradient of the tangent is the negative reciprocal of that, minus three quarters. And I think it's a bit odd that you've got so many marks for this, having already essentially done the same thing earlier on in the paper, you remember? But anyway, it came up again. So there you have it. So we want a line with gradient minus three quarters going through the point. 8, 2, y minus y1 is m, x minus x1. We, we know where we're heading with this. Multiply through 4y minus 8 is minus 3x minus 8. So 4y minus 8 is minus 3x plus 24. This last bit has to be completely convincing, doesn't it? Because they've given us the answer. So we need to show that we really know what we're doing to get there. So that's probably the minimum amount of working out. There we go, that's our five marks. Five marks for that. There's not much to that, is there? Wow. Now, part three really wasn't that all, all that difficult, but I think at the end of the paper, there were lots of tired people who just thought, what are they saying about the area of the triangle here? This is a, it's a circle, for goodness sake. Why are they asking me about a triangle? So, let's be logical about what it says. The circle meets the y-axis at Q. So Q is the point where the circle meets the y-axis. That means x is zero in the circle equation. And the circle has equation 
x squared plus y squared minus 10x plus 4y plus 4 is 0. So the circle is y squared plus 4y plus 4 is 0, which is y plus 2 all squared. So y equals minus 2. So q is the point 0 minus 2. There we go. There's, there's a, a good start finding q. R. R is the point where the tangents meet the y-axis. And they gave us the tangent equation. So even if we didn't do part 2, we've already got the tangent equation. So that's where x equals 0. So three zeros plus 4y equals 32 which gives us y equals 8. So r is the point 0, 8. Right. Let's, I feel I need a sketch. Because we're now thinking about a triangle of q, r, and p. Here's my sketch. It's not going to be terribly detailed. Here at 0, 8 is r. Here at 0, minus 2 is the point q. Way over here, at the point 8, 2, is P. This is my triangle. Okay. Um, it's, I, it's the way I've drawn it. It kind of looks a little bit isosceles, but it's not, is it? Because uh, cause this point 2 is closer to this point at minus 2 than that 1 up at 8. So it's, it's kind of more a little bit like that. We're asked for the area of it though. We don't get put off by the fact that it's not kind of sat on a baseline. It's a, an area is just half the base times the height. So all we need to know is the, how far away one of the points is from one of the sides. We don't know for that side or for that side, but this side, we know that distance, don't we? That distance there is a distance of 8, because that's the x-coordinate. This distance here is a distance of 10, from 8 down to minus 2. And the area of a triangle is a half times the base times the height. So we get 40 as the area of our triangle. That's all there was to it. No fancy trigonometry or anything like that. And that's maths.